that's my room. I have a an, an RO setup uh, in eleven one and a Dolby setup in nine one six. And I can switch between those formats. They're all calibrated. They're all certified by Dolby, by Sony, and by Oro. That's what fascinated us with um, Mary is her vocal style. Yeah. It's very specific and beautiful. And it it's needs different treatment, different treatment than some other vocalists. Midnight on the Welcome, everyone, to a very special episode of Life and Surround. I have the uh, amazing honor today to talk to Ronald Prent. Um, I love talking to mixing engineers. Um, I, am, as many viewers know, I'm just completely obsessed with surround sound, particularly for albums. And um, a great mix can't save bad music, but like when there's an album that I love and the mix just doesn't quite work out, it's just so, it's so <laughs> deflating. And so, um, you know, I have this, this mental pantheon of engineers who really, really make me happy. And uh, your name is on a lot of albums I really love. So when, uh, when I heard, oh, my pleasure. When I heard not too long ago that um, Mark and Mary had linked up with you and Darcy, um, that that just uh, made me pretty excited. So um, I want to just give others a little bit of an introduction. I I am by no means a Ronald Prent historian, but I I do have some familiarity. Uh, this oh, with temptation, temptation yeah. Black Symphony concert is like one of the best home concert experiences i've ever had it just sounded like amazing so i went scanning through the credits and was like oh cool you know ronald and darcy make sense uh yeah. so for anyone watching like you know pro tip of the day go get this uh it's probably out of print by now i think i found it on discogs but it wasn't too bad and uh totally worth it totally worth it and then uh, I've mentioned this album before on this channel, but I just wanted to, again, alert people, oh. like, if they have never heard of Ozark Henry, they should. Partic particularly this uh, 3D audio album, it's uh, definitely an RO. Yes. Is it also an Atmos? No, it's an RO. Yeah, this one's RO. It's, it's so, currently also available in the Sony 360 format on the Sony website. Yes, and I see 5.1 DTS HD Master here as well. So lots of options. Um, I listened to the RO version. I consider it to be the most superior sound format there is. Uh, yeah. So I, I love it when a great album receives the RO treatment, and this is an example. So... For those watching, again, if you haven't picked up this this Blu-ray from Ozark Henry, do it. And it's another Ronald Print Darcy Proper collaboration, right? Right. And um, so then that brings us to Mary Fall's new record, Can't Get It Out of My Head. This currently is um, in stereo and 5.1. Again, Ronald and Darcy teamed up on the, the mix and the master. And um, so with that, I've given like my familiarity, you know, as far as it goes, you, you, you're involved in other 5.1 albums over the years, Simple Minds, stuff like that. But if you could just give us a bit of your history, you know, with mixing and how you became associated with this project, and then we could kind of go from there. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I'm in the business for almost 40 years and went through several stages of being a uh, coffee boy and, and assistant and learning in at the studio and in that case Whistler Studios in the Netherlands learning the trade from other engineers and moving up and started traveling through Europe and uh, ended 
uh, at some point in Galaxy Studios in Belgium, which was the first studio in Europe that had 5.1 surround and had the first SSL uh, console that could do that. And so I teamed up with them uh, because I wanted to do surround and I was involved in the Sony Philips uh, development of SACD. And uh, that was the place to start doing that because they needed benchmark mixing and, and experiments and we need studios for that. So I ended up in Galaxy Studios for 11 years and worked with Wilfried um also on his hour format. That's where that got developed, where we did all the experimentation with height and where the speakers and angles of speakers came from. And actually one of the first ones I stuff I did in 9.1 in Oro was a Man of War record that I'd done, which uh, coincides with the fact that Joey DeMaio um, is the owner of the current place that I'm uh, working in, in Valhalla Studios in upstate Auburn, New York, because he is, uh, like many of us, a absolute uh, immersive fanatic. That's, that's he thinks that everybody should listen to that um, that way. And currently he's building a second studio in in 13.1 uh, so he can, can write and compose in that format. And, and it all st started when I when I worked with Sony and Philips in the development of 5.1 for SACD. Um, they had a lot of people doing classical and jazz, but they had nobody at that time that would do anything except that. So when I was doing punk, I was doing really hard rock with Guano Apes and uh, doing heavy metal. Uh, I'm the, the guy that did the first three Rammstein albums. Uh, and did the first Rammstein concert in 5.1 for Oro. That never got released for other reasons, but we did all these um, experimental mixes, so they had demo material. And from that, it grew and, and grew, and then I went back to the Netherlands to Whistler Studios and, and upgraded that project into a 9.1 uh, studio and completely Oro compatible. And then I, I, I um, got married to Darcy Proper. Um, oh, and, I did uh, not know that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I met her in Belgium, but she came to work there. Um, uh, so because her specialty was uh, surround mastering, and they were opening a mastering room, and they just headhunted her. So she she came to Belgium and started uh, the surround mastering there. And one thing lead to another, and uh, we got friended. Um, then we ended up getting married. Yeah, very friendly. Yeah, yeah it I've was definitely very friendly. Seen, yeah. I've definitely seen her name on some Galaxy Studio stuff. But she started her career at Sony Music in New York. Cool. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, how did you get involved with Mary's record? Um, well, being here in Auburn, upstate New York. Um, and having a, a facility uh, that can do any immersive format, being a Dolby, uh, Sony, 360, 5.1, stereo also. <laughs> um, and um, Mark Doyle being an old uh, friend of Joey DeMaio, um, uh, they kind of got together uh, because Mark lives in Syracuse, which is yes, 30 minutes right. from here. Yeah. So the and and uh, Mark had got wind of the project that we're doing here, so called up Joey and came and um, had a look at the place, and we met, we talked, and uh, played some music, and and so he said, "Well, would you be interested to doing the Mary Fall album with me?" And and have Darcy master it, and uh, so that's how that connection came. Uh, it's very local uh, how the connection uh, started uh, through Joey. And so then we teamed up and we talked about the album and how they wanted it. And I loved the idea and and the originality. They recorded everything at either Mark's place or in Syracuse. Right. And um, then uh, Mark came here and, and started. we started working on it. It's still under COVID conditions. So a lot of it was done remotely 
I, I can stream in stereo or in uh, immersive to clients. And then uh, only at the end, Mark would come here for a couple of days and we'd go through the songs again and do all the updates that he or Mary would want it. But it was nice to be able to um, work with such a vocal because that's what fascinated us with um, Mary is her vocal style. Yeah. It's very specific and beautiful. And it it's needs go- different treatment, different treatment than some other vocalists. And and so that's a real challenge with the arrangements that were made around her to make her feel and sit like she sits now in the music. Well, it sounds to me in stereo and 5.1 like you completely nailed it. Like I the balance of the album is incredible. Um <clears throat> I want to move forward and ask you um sort of about the mixing of the album. So these questions relate to like, what kind of gear do you use? What was it like to mix this album? And um, Mark says that you have this philosophy or style uh, of like relaxing sounds, maybe psychoacoustics. Yeah. And uh, one thing I noticed in listening to this album, every single time it just puts me in such a chill mood that I wondered if, um, did you mix any kind of relaxing magic into it? Uh, did you do anything like that in post? Uh, so uh, uh, the, the making of the album, the mixing of the album, I'm, that's what I'm curious about. Um, first of all, um, let me see if I can do this. Um, I have another camera. I wanna, I, don't go away. Just be fun. There we go. There you go. So, that's my room. And yes. this is the... F- it's partly the front and a bit of the sides you see. So I have a normal LCR, but with large PMC, it's all PMC. And then I have a an, an Auro setup uh, in 11.1 and a Dolby setup in 9.16. So I can, uh, I can switch between those formats. They're all calibrated. They're all certified by Dolby, by Sony, and by Auro. Um, and I the console that you see is a fix uh, 360 console. That's the only analog console in the world that can pan vertically and laterally and diagonal in 11.1. And it has, every channel has an 11.1 output and uh, has a stereo separate bus. So when I do stereo, I can also parallel mix in immersive. Or when I do immersive, I can parallel discrete mix in stereo. And I have on the on the top over there, right there, the black ones. The, those are modules that have uh, are set up to send to eight objects when it's either Sony or uh, Dolby Atmos. Um, but I go to an analog console. I have a huge amount of upward gear, compressors, EQs, all old, old stuff that I use to create the sound, the depth, and the warmth and the space, as analog gives space, digital in plugins, some do, some are very good, some are not so good, but they're meant to be that way. Um, but the basic of the sound is analog, even though it comes out of a, a, a Pro Tools uh, playback system. Um, I use um, uh, antelope uh, converters, and they're all uh, clocked with antelope uh, clock and atomic clock. So we're all at the same sample rate. We're all at the same frame rate. We're all at the same video rate. It's all synchronized because I run four computers at the same time to do all of this. And that's only to be flexible because when I mix, I don't want to be thinking about all the electronics. I want to be thinking about the music. So I have a Pro Tools playback system that can run at any sample rate. Then I have a Pro Tools recording system that can run on any simple. Those they run in sync. They are synchronized. When I press play on one, the other follows. And there on the, on my recording system, I record stereo. I record the sources that go to Dolby Atmos, and I record the sources that go to Sony 360. Then on the third computer, I have the the Atmos renderer and the Sony renderer running, so I can actually listen to it while I'm doing it but all, all in sync. That's technically complicated to set up, but once it's set up, 
it disappears in the background and it becomes a tool that you use. Um, so then you have a little bit of an idea of um, the environment I work in, all the overhead speakers, all the little square ones, those are all part of the Dolby setup. Uh, and the ones on the poles are part of the RO setup. I I promise you, I promise you that when viewers see this, like some of their jaws are going to hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine did. I mean, this is uh, you know when that was we started awesome. Doing, when we started doing this, like I said, Joe DeMaio is a immersive fanatic. It, it's what he loves. He said that's the way people should listen to music. So he said, when we do this. A couple of years ago, when he asked me to help him set this up, he said, let's do it the best way we can possibly do it and the most flexible way we can possibly do it. Because well, we don't know in years from now what formats will stay and we want to be able to give everybody the formats that they ask for. So well, that, it looks like we, a, that's looks like a beautiful that. space. It is. Yeah, it is. And uh, you have uh, speakers up on you know, racking and stuff. So it looks like it's highly flexible. It is, but we made we made it all uh, in uh, in rec. So it's an open space. It is, it's an old church. It's an old Baptist church. And it's all wood in, inside here. And uh, the only thing they did is they put a, a floating concrete floor in it. So we got rid of all, uh, all contact with the outside walls. And then we put up some... Uh, uh, theater curtains for the windows yeah uh, and that was the other thing is we didn't want to change the interior of the church yeah the, uh, the objective was to not modify it and make it work which which we did with theater curtains and little corner uh, treatments so the flutter would go away and mm -hmm. it all worked and then when you sit here you're mixing you're like mixing in your living room or so you're very it's very comfortable and therefore, you listen different to your music. I mean, I do than uh, in a really uh, uh, well created control room, which is fine too. Done that for years, but it's a, a bit more relaxing. So you you approach your music maybe maybe different. I don't know. I think I do. Uh, and and what becomes very important, and especially music for Mary, is how to balance stuff but that's where you get your space you use the analog equipment relaxes sounds it does yeah uh, whereas if you do all digital all all your uh attacks are zero or one microsecond there everything's there all the time fast analog takes a little bit of time has a little curve so it relaxes stuff more so i used a lot of uh outboard gear i used some plugins here and there I used a lot of outboard gear to make the sound. Use the analog console, go to the individual channels, use analog EQs, use analog bus compression to get that, that sound that they were looking for. And then, then we spent a lot of time with her voice to find the appropriate reverb. Interesting. Because it's really important because that determines what can happen around her. And that's the other thing is with this kind of music is uh, when I mix that, I you know I look for rhythm, which were usually drums, and for the basic notes, bass, some chord structure if it's a one acoustic guitar or a keyboard, and the vocal goes on. The vocal goes on really early in the process, really early because it determines where other stuff can go. Because it, in this case, it's very vocal orientated. It's not a heavy pop band where things can be equally loud. It, it's a right. performance thing. So we went through, I don't know, three, four different reverbs um, before we actually landed on the one she liked. And um, the one she liked was the one that they used when they made the demos, which was just a standard um, uh, effort uh, plug-in <laughs> reverb. And I had luscious plates, uh, uh, cinematic rooms, uh, all of the you know really expensive ones, and um, and in the end she said, yeah, but can we try out the one that we used on the demo? Mark said, you gotta try it out. They send me the send me the settings. And it was just basic settings, and the only thing <laughs> they changed was was the length on different songs. Yeah, how it goes when you make when you write your songs or you know make your yeah. demos, and and I put it on. 
and and funny enough when you when i did that it sounded like her so it, it was a, that reverb didn't take any space up but it was there all the time yeah and that worked with her voice beautifully so we used that one particular standard Avid plugin <laughs> for her voice because in the end it doesn't matter what it is from which company it is or you know how expensive it was or uh, how fantastically brilliantly it it has been built if it doesn't sound right you don't need it and whatever sounds right and and that articulated her singing that reverb and you can hear because she has a lot of reverb on her voice but it's beautiful and then uh, the I nice agree. thing was that like on the more acoustic stuff on the pianos and on the strings then I used the cinematic room which is the you know this the complete opposite of effort it's it's the and it's one of the most beautiful uh, room simulators there is and uh, and and again because that was so different all these spaces um Got got their own place in the mix, and then they were just balancing. So, using mostly analog gear and analog in the signal chain, is that the secret to this relaxing sound that I that I'm hearing, or is there any more to that magic? No, I believe so. All right, cool. It, it's it and and that same process when it goes to mastering to Darcy, she has a high-end analog chain so she plays back from pro tools uh goes to spl uh mastering console uses uh, um spl eqs uses uh, millennia co compressors uh, um, uh, dcs converters uh, um, oh no i can't i can't get the other one um that'll get to me um well, maybe uh we can ask her <laughs> oh yeah you can have an interview with her i'm sure she'll be delighted to do that oh um, that would be amazing i'm sure if you if, if you ask i think she will definitely do that um and but so she she goes she, again she uses plugins when necessary or when appropriate for a project but for sure. Mary, it's all done analog, the whole mastering process. And again, because you don't smash it against the wall, to put it bluntly, in the digital domain, uh, dynamic range is there, and therefore there is um, uh, it breathes, and it has it's not brick, and this music cannot be super loud, but it's not yeah. soft. So there is a way in mastering, and there's a lot of mastering engineers that do that. Um, that when you use analog equipment, you can get it to be loud, but still breathe, still, still have pleasant. dynamic range. So, so your your the way you experience the music, it it will give you a satisfying feeling instead of I want to turn this down. Now, there's wow. other music that 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 really needs that kind of uh, approach where you brick wall it digitally, and that's what that music needs, and it's justified. But again, then you when you use only analog, then it is. But it takes more effort. Analog takes a bit more time, takes a bit more effort. It doesn't have any presets. You have to figure out what works for each instrument, and then for your mix and for your bus, and then in mastering the same thing. It has to have. Um, you need a little bit of time to do that. So I'm getting near the end of my time for today. I have just a couple of more questions, if you don't mind. Sure. I have heard that this album may receive uh, at an Atmos mix. Yeah, it's, it's I've already done it. Ooh, all right. I mean, awesome. Uh, I've made it so that yeah. I can actually finish it in Atmos. So there, there, there is a there is a, a nine one six version of it. Yeah. Well, I hope that um, sees the light of day. Uh, I, I hope I, so too, because I've heard it already, and so did Mark, and it's beautiful. Any idea if that would um, be destined for a streaming format, or will it also receive a physical release, or at least a download? Um, maybe a download, but I think that will be streaming uh, yeah. okay. on Apple, 
Okay. I, well, I, but I, 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 but I, I don't really know. They're free to do that because yeah. they they're their own uh, publisher. Yeah. So, so they can do. I mean, I can even make a Sony 360 version out of it if I wanted to. Because I did a discrete 916, an Arrow version of it. Well, that's what I would love to hear, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the, the, that's the most beautiful version. Yeah. Well, um, I do love that Mary has control, you know, over over what she releases and how it releases. So um, I will I will hope that it just receives, you know, the the most suitable releases possible for this beautiful music. <clears throat> um i hope so it's, too it's, it's turned it, out to be a really special album and, and one of her better works i think i think it's an, a, a fantastic album just musically all all points about mixing aside it's it, it really is a marvelous listen the collection of songs the selection of songs the arrangements how they carefully chose the right keys for her voice and it, it just really all ties together super well yeah um, Mark did a great job with that you know well, and obviously you're you're mixing and Darcy's mastering, you know, complements that and just wraps it all up. Yeah. Uh, well, so I'm excited to hear that um, the album has been mixed or is ready, you know, for immersive. Uh, totally excited to hear anything that they put out. I just want to close by asking, you know, uh, what the future holds for you. Um, various studios, <laughs> if you if you know. Um, I'm sure that that there are exciting projects in your future and i look forward to to your output so i just wanted to see what you can tell me and viewers kind of well, pique our curiosity um, <coughs> we're we're stationed here in valhalla studios in upstate new york in open that's our base where we work from um just recently finished an album for a, a german artist called david garrett he's a violin player usually plays pop music. In this case, we did a classical album with um, 60 piece orchestra with all kinds of classical work. He's a very, very famous violin player in the classical world. And he always branches out to the pop side. And that cool. comes out in a couple of weeks. And currently working on a fairy tale musical for another German client. And Darcy's been working on uh, Laurie Lieberman's new album that's out already, and they're working on an Atmos version of that. Nice. Um, so, yeah, we've been busy uh, doing some Broadway musicals from the 70s and the 80s in uh, Sony 360 and Atmos. We just Very cool. Four of them. They will come out in the fall in Atmos and Sony 360. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I want to close for now. I just want to thank you for your time. This has been You're fascinating. So I, I really appreciate getting like a a look at um, your environment and some insights into your process. Uh, I just want to relate again for viewers that like I have been excited about Ronald and Darcy for like a long time. I think I remember seeing Darcy's name like as far back as like a Porcupine Tree album and um, uh, and uh steely then uh, she did gaucho in in surround and holy uh, smokes that is yeah. like a demonstration all-time classic surround disc for a lot of people yeah that's amazing yeah, it is yeah <clears throat> we so, use it a I, lot if we go somewhere and we want to hear how the sis how the system sounds that's the first record we put in <laughs> well i use gaucho to calibrate my stuff too so yeah well very good uh, but i'm glad to know really... i'm on the right track well yeah, so that's, i that's one of the best ones i sincerely appreciate your time today i'm sure that viewers are just going to just be absolutely floored uh by this insight especially since um i've covered a lot of quad and 5.1 over the years and haven't covered as much atmos and ro so you know that's sort of like a newer thing and it brings in like a more immersive experience. I want to talk to you sometime yep. soon about RO, <laughs> voice yeah, of God we, and, and the different capabilities will. that it has. Okay, cool. So uh, to, to wrap to up, we've been talking today about the mixing, mastering um, of Mary Falls' new record. Can't get it out of my head. It releases on July 22nd. So 
viewers won't see these videos before then. I've agreed to to hold everything until release day. Um, but um, it's already selling well and deservedly so. It's yep. select selected well, recorded well, mixed well, mastered well. Uh, this this gets full full marks from me. This is just an incredible listening experience. Can't wait to I hear agree. um, you know, whatever Atmos, RO, Sony, whatever comes out. We'll be listening. <laughs>